All right, welcome. Welcome. Good, good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to see all of you, see your faces, uh, to be connected with you um, this morning. I was just struck um, by the metaphor, um, Nenzen, you mentioned uh, of too many windows open. You know, if I look at my mind, sometimes it looks like there are too many windows open. <laughs> <laughs> you know and, and too many are just you know running away and doing their thing and there's sort of things moving in it and it's like whoa so much activity so uh today here in in massachusetts it's um cloudy and cool i think the high today is 60 and it's sort of a little drizzly uh, which is which is nice after last week it was really really hot and really really humid um, and it looks like next week it will again be hot and humid and i know out in the west um, you guys have also had your time of unexpected heat and warmth um, and even even more so up in the pacific northwest And the other things that are on my mind is also the, um, you know, the evolving pandemic. It's like, well, we, with the vaccinations, it looks like things have shifted quite a bit here in this country. Um, in Europe there, well, my, 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 I talk to my mother regularly in Germany. So it looks like they're a little bit behind with the vaccinations overall, but it's also making progress. Um, and then, of course, there's, you know, much of the rest of the world that, you know, doesn't have a lot of vaccines yet. So a lot remains to be done. And even here in this country, um, there are, with the Delta variant, there are, you know, pockets where maybe we have to, again, be a little bit careful. You know, and, and care for each other and protect each other by keeping our distance a little bit and maybe wearing masks. And so staying in touch with what is actually going on. And I wonder how the few minutes of Zazen today were for you. What did you notice? What did you experience? What was that like? So um, today I'd like to, like to talk a little bit about um, a, a koan. I think that that has really touched me as I studied it and it feels like it continues to unfold. Um, so this is from the Blue Cliff Record um, case 27. Yunmen's the body exposed the golden wind. So a student asked Master Yunmen, how is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? Yunmen said, body exposed in the golden wind. How is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? There is a verse that goes along with that koan, and it goes as follows. Since the question has the source, the answer too is in the same place. Three phases should be distinguished. An arrow point flies far into the void. Over the great plains, chilling wind blasts, howling, wailing. In the eternal sky, intermittent misty rains. Just like today. So Yunmen was a um, a Zen teacher um, back in China. He studied with various teachers. Um, 
he was the, um, the student who came to his teacher and his teacher kept closing the door on him until eventually he stuck his foot in the door and thought, ha, I got my way in. But his teacher slammed the door and broke his foot. And he saw something. Uh, I don't recommend that <laughs> as a general practice. So there was a lot of harshness, but also a lot of, um, a lot of honest questions that really drove him. And ultimately, he studied with um, Sui Feng, who we heard from a little bit from Nenzen um, a few weeks ago. Also, um, hard, arduous practice, lots of shaking. But here, the teaching has a different feeling to me. It's like he just uses words. How is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? And I have the sense that this was an honest and deep question for the student. This was not casual. Maybe like we heard before, um, he, he didn't dare asking the question before. And it took some time, it took some sitting, it took some practice to, to really bring it up for the teacher. For me, what it brings up are the three heavenly messengers, right? Going back to the story of the Buddha, old age, sickness, and death. Okay. You know, what is it like when the tree withers and the leaves fall? And the leaves fall for all of us. So how is it for you? Susan Moon has this great book. It's called, This is Getting Old. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is getting old. <laughs> you know, um, at times for me, there's sort of, you know, the anxiety of realizing that, oh my God, you know, the leaves are falling. I don't want the leaves to fall. And sort of all my usual reactions come up. It's like, well, I want to control it. I want to eat healthy. I want to exercise. And suddenly, you know, sort of quietly in the back of my mind, there is sort of an unspoken belief that that's going to hold it at bay, right? For at least a little bit longer. Well, maybe. <laughs> so, you know, noticing the, the attempt to control um, what feels uncomfortable in the anxiety around it for me. And I'm also reminded again of the poem, since the question has the source, the answer too is in the same place. I'm very intrigued by that. So here the student is showing up and says to the teacher, how is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? What is he really hoping for? Is he asking the teacher because he thinks that the teacher has been there and has figured it out and is going to give him the answer that's going to also maybe apply to his life. Right? It's like um, looking for the answer outside of himself. That's what we do. You know, we read books, you know, we listen to podcasts, we listen to Dharma talks. We ask people on the path who have spent some time on the path. But listen closely to your question. Are you ex what exactly are you expecting? Are you expecting them to give you the answer? Are you hoping for that?
So what does it feel like to be the tree withering and to notice the leaves falling? So Yunman responds, the body exposed in the golden wind. What does it mean to be naked and exposed in being the tree, in withering, in being the leaves that are falling? What does it mean to be fully exposed to that? Well, it strikes me that the monk, the student, allowed herself or allowed himself to be fully exposed and to really show up with that question and say, this is what's in my heart. This is at the bottom of my discomfort. This is the bottom of, of my concern. And Yunman, in a way, acknowledges this exposed body in the question. I think for the longest time when I would read these coins, I would sort of have the sense that it's like, you know, the, the Zen master is smart ass coming up with the right answer and the student was all wrong. And it's like the master has the answers and the student doesn't. But here it feels almost grandmotherly in how the teacher acknowledges how the student shows up fully exposed. Willing to be with that discomfort and uncertainty that I don't know, I'm at my wit's ends. I'm, I've tried everything and nothing has filled that hunger. And then Yunmen continues, body exposed in the golden wind. That golden wind, it's like, it doesn't feel like a golden wind, right? It feels like in, in, the, in the verse, it sort of beautifully says, um, how exactly does it, does it say? It's like um, chilling over the great plains, chilling wind blasts, howling, wailing. You know, that's sort of what I feel like when I realize that the leaves are falling, it's like, oh no, oh. This doesn't feel like a golden kind of wind. So that's intriguing. Body exposed in the golden wind. Well, maybe it's a little bit like our Zazen, you know? Experiencing the body, breathing. Maybe sometimes the breath breathing the body. Noticing the feelings, the sensations in the body. The thoughts in the mind. Noticing the anxiety that perhaps is there. Noticing the fear. Noticing that we may not be able to think of a way out. And there is some clarity in that, right? There's some honesty. This is how it is right now. And maybe also noticing our usual reaction, um, what um, Joko Beck calls our chief feature. It's sort of our um, preferred way to dealing with life when it's uncomfortable. Um, for me, it's often sort of a, a distraction and a sort of uh, trying to ignore it, right? It's like, oh, um, let me pretend for a moment that this isn't here and maybe then I'll feel better, right? 
Um, other chief features may be blame. It's like, oh, you know, this is all what's wrong with the world and blah, 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 and they really shouldn't and they really should and they do and blah, blah, blah. Or maybe a chief feature is judging ourselves. It's like, oh, I've gotten myself into this mess. I'm really the, the worst person ever. And this, you know, I suffer this just because, you know, I'm a total and utter failure ever. And I have to do everything I can to make sure that nobody finds out about that. So noticing our usual reactions, the ruts that our mind and that our hearts have gone down so often. These different dimensions sort of remind me of the greed, anger, and ignorance. It's like, oh, let me distract myself. Let me go into ignorance. Oh, I don't know that. Ah, now I feel better. Or maybe there's the anger at the world of, you know, setting things up in a way that's just terrible and unfair. And just wanting the comfort. Wherever we can find it. So here we feel the chilling wind blast, the howling and the wailing, but maybe there is a little bit of space that we can actually see that we're in the same wind blast, in the same howling, that we're doing the same wailing that we've done over and over so many times before. I remember um, going on Seshin and and it felt like, you know, and I was sort of getting into the space of, um, you know, being physically uncomfortable and sort of the first days and you know, my neck is hurting and my head is hurting and my knees are hurting and the food is not what I want and I get up too early and I can't really sleep and it's, it's all and, and I'm sort of, you know, getting into this mind space of, of blaming the teacher and that, you know, that, you know, the schedule is all wrong and this is all wrong and, and all of a sudden noticing that, ooh, I had exactly the same story playing the last time I was on Seshin during these early days. Huh, isn't that interesting? You know, sometimes there's a space that opens up when we can actually see the, the way that we're trying to get away from this moment, right? And, and in my experience, um, Seshin is a beautiful way of being able to see that. It's not comfortable, necessarily. But there is something in the discomfort that brings some clarity to what is actually going on. So then this breath, this sensation, this moment of clarity, recognizing this moment of confusion, maybe there's a golden wind that's blowing through us. seeing things as they are. And as it says in the poem, in the eternal sky, intermittent misty rains. You know? It's like, this is where the mind goes when the mind is uncomfortable and then it rains for a while and I'm pulled into blame and anger and avoidance. But they're just intermittent rains. Right? It's so easy to think that's me and there's something wrong with me because that's what happened. I should not be getting angry. I should not blame others. I should not try to distract myself. This is terrible. This is wrong. Well, you know. They're just intermittent misty rains that have come and gone through our own history of growing up and that have just become part of our way of dealing with things. They maybe also had a good place at various times in our lives. But maybe we can ask ourselves, do they still serve? Or can we let the rains come and the rains go? And then we're soaked all through. How is it when the tree withers and the leaves fall? Body exposed in the golden wind. I 
And I think also not just on an individual level. I think Nenza and an Emmy um, in the in the last weeks really also pointed to the Sangha level that this is not a solitary path. That um, I think as Dogen said, only a Buddha and a Buddha. Right? One is not enough. You know, we we need each other. And just like in the in the koan, you know, the student came to the teacher. And I think both the student and the teacher benefited from that encounter. So on a Sangha level, um, we find out in early in the pandemic that, oh, uh, we can't be together in person. Oh, that's terrible. And then somebody sets up a Zoom, creating a space for community, for an unexpected intimacy and a shared space for being silent and still together. If somebody looks at that from the outside, that doesn't make, seem to make any sense whatsoever. Like, it's like, wait a second, you, you connect through Zoom, through video, through sound, and then you just sit together, you have your eyes lowered, you sit in silence. It's like, it's like no, no channel of Zoom transmits any of that, we might think. And yet, there's a golden wind in that, right? I mean, all of us, I think, have experienced that. There's a golden wind in just knowing, being together. You know, taking the seat. So there's an action that arises, you know? So we see with clarity, and then an idea comes up. We don't know from where. Similarly, on a global level, with the vaccines, with the climate change, we see it and maybe there's an action that comes up for us. Maybe a small action, maybe just writing a letter, maybe making a donation, maybe talking to our neighbors, how this really has us concerned doesn't have to be a particular action, but an action that comes out of a clear recognition of what is actually true this moment. So let me close with a poem by Derek Walcott that's called Love After Love, that I think illuminates a little bit of that as well. Time will come when with elation, you will greet yourself arriving at your own door, in your own mirror, and each will smile at the other's welcome and say, sit here, eat. You will love again the stranger who was yourself. Give wine, give bread, give back your heart to itself, to the stranger, who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another, who knows you by heart. Take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes. Peel your image from the mirror. Sit, feast on your life. Thank you. <laughs>